Hello everybody, I hope you're doing well and welcome to Lacuna number 4 where we are diving deeper into Detective Neil Conrad's case. Alright. I have a lot of things here. Forward, sorry from Saito. Zora, you probably figured out by now that I lied to you about Williams asking me to take care of the handover. Pretty sure you're mad as hell and I'm sorry for that. Thing is, I have a bad feeling about this whole mission and I really couldn't stand it if you got hurt. We promised each other that this was the last job we would accept and that we would get out of it all afterwards. However, over the last few days, I realized that going back to normal after all those years scares the hell out of me. I'm not like you. What I'm trying to say is, if I don't get out of this, I want you to quit nonetheless and do what we were planning to do. I'm sure it will make you happy, maybe not immediately, but surely after a while. If everything goes as planned, I'll be with you in no time and I'm sure I'll find a way to get used to normal life. If it doesn't, don't look back and don't come looking for me. Boyd. Okay. Next, our deal. Um, Mr. Gonzalez, as promised, I am sending you more detailed instructions from you for your mission on Gara. On 1840-0504 at 8.30 in the morning, you will wait for your contact person at the big fountain on Joros Plaza. She will hand you a data disk, a data stick that you will take with you when you have when you leave the planet in the evening. As soon as you have left the Garian network, you will be contacted by one of my employees and given further instructions. As we already agreed, you are strictly forbidden from asking questions or trying to find out what the data on the stick is about. Discretion is of utmost importance for this mission. As soon as the module is in my possession, the agreed upon fee will be transferred to your bank account. Sincerely. Then we have the list of companies here. Okay, companies that could be behind the li liberators. Mm. So we have Norton Robotics, uh, familiar. We also have Millex Mining, which is also familiar, and the Dyson Enterprise, Jovia Mining sector. Hmm. What if it's actually the Norton Robotics woman, the old lady in the um uh... Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wait, I just realized. Yeah, she was downstairs. Hmm. Interesting, okay. The name of the company behind the Liberators is they are based on they belong to the sector specialized in Yeah. Okay. Now I'm in I'm very interested to see how this goes. Okay. Let me just check if I'm recording. Okay. Here at Gera Balloon Balloon Market. Alright. So okay, this is not where we're going, we're going up. Hey Gary, Conrad, I'm having car troubles, but I'll be there soon. Car troubles, huh? Save it, Conrad. This is literally the first time you got somewhere faster than me. <laughs> While you were waiting, while you're waiting, you could swing by the could you could swing by the restaurant where Cox presumably had dinner and check his alibi. Okay. We asked for them to send over tonight's surveillance footage. They said that their camera is unfortunately broken right now. Seems to be one of those locations where privacy is part of the service. 
The restaurant is on the layer above Cox's office and the train station. Go upstairs and take a left. You could have a chat with his wife if she's still there. Her name is Yvonne Cox. Roger, roger that. See you in a bit. I'll give you a call when I have an ETA. Alright, so... This is the house. So we can't go there yet. We need to... Go up a level. Another one. Then take a left. Right here. Alright. Waitress. Good evening, sir. Do you have a reservation? Evening. I'd like to talk to Yvonne Cox. Is she here? I must ask, is she expecting you? Not really, no. I'm sorry, but I can only let you in as part of a reservation. Neil Conrad, CDI. Would you please lead me to Miss Cox? Would you please follow me? Miss Hendricks, and that's why it's vital that we keep negotiating with them, no matter what Albert says. Miss Cox? Yes? Who are you? Neil Conrad, CDI. Sorry to interrupt, but I'd like to ask you a few questions. CDI? What did I do to deserve your attention? It's about your, act your, has your husband, actually. Ah, well... Excuse me, Mr. Conrad. Jacqueline Hendricks, attorney at law. Miss Cox is my client. You realize that she is not obligated to give you any information about... It's okay, Jacqueline. Let's talk, Mr. Conrad. Would you mind if we stepped outside? I need some fresh air. I love the jazzy music. Jacqueline is a little overprotective sometimes. That's how you know a lawyer is worth the, their salt. You said this was about Albert. What is it you want to ask me? I was wondering if you could tell me where your husband was around 6 o'clock tonight. We met here with Jacqueline at 17.30 and discussed some business decisions over dinner. About half an hour ago, Albert got a phone call and excused himself. That was us. Sorry for interrupting your dinner. Did Mr. Cox act strange in, a w in any way over the last few days? I have no idea. Last time I saw him before tonight must have been two weeks ago. Albert and I don't live together anymore. We have all but separated. You're getting a divorce? Maybe. It would be very complicated for our businesses. I see. Well, that's all for now. Thank you for taking the time. Okay. That sounds pretty messy. Gary, what's up? I'll be there in 10 minutes. What about you? Did you talk to the wife? Yeah, she corroborates his alibi. Do you believe her? I didn't have the impression she'd lied to protect him. Their marriage is apparently more of a pragmatic arrangement at this point. I see. Listen, I got bad news. Moore's not home. He's on a holiday, according to his wife. She said he went to Manami, Manami Tree Resort. We're currently trying to confirm this and get a hold of him. Why don't you go talk to Moore's wife? See if you buy that story. Saito says that you're very close by. Move up a layer or two and make a right to leave the market. You should find her apartment there. Come back to come back down to Cox's office when you're done. It's right near the train station. I'll be there in ten. Okay. On my way up to Moore's apartment, I walked through aromatic clouds of fried rice, fish, and mystery meat. I'd been down to Paloon Market once before with Catherine. It almost surprised me to see that none of the platforms had collapsed in the years since. People were still selling the same junk, some of it probably stolen halfway across the planet. Anybody home? Mrs. Moore, who's there? Neil, uh, Agent Neil Conrad, CDI. I already talked to your colleagues. I know, I'm sorry to bother you once more. You said that your husband went on a vacation, is that correct? Why don't you come in? Can I see your badge? Of course. James went to Manami Tree Resort. His flight left last night after work. Is there a way to contact him? 
He left his cell here because he wanted some peace and quiet. What exactly do you want from him? I hope he's not in trouble. We're still collecting evidence or why would you say that? Why would you say that? Does he get in trouble a lot? I... No, not lately. Wouldn't everyone be worried about the CDI knocking on their door? Not lately. Does your husband have a criminal record? He made some mistake years ago, and he did this time and he did his time for it. What did he do? His boss asked him to make a delivery of illegal substances. James got caught and his boss said he knew nothing about it. Who was his boss at the time? Not Mr. Cox, I suppose? Oh, it was Cox, all right. James was in prison for almost a year and went right back to working for him. He didn't hold a grudge at all? Let's say he didn't have much of a choice. It's hard enough finding a job nowadays, even more so with a criminal record. Thank you, Mrs. Moore. That's all for now. If your husband gets in touch, tell him to contact me. Here's my cell info. Do you mind if I have a quick look around? Look around? Why not? But please don't make a mess. Alright, so we have a few things here. Single plate in the sink looks like she had dinner alone. Oxidanol, a highly addictive substance used in lung treatment. Hmm. Okay, wait. Oh. What was that about? Okay, uh, so we got... I think we took a picture of the news or something. <laughs> Charges against Cox Security, Garion Gazette. Report by Thomas Alley. This was in 1831-1122. Okay. Last week, a delivery van belonging to the company Cox Security was stopped as part of a routine traffic control. The police found an undisclosed amount of mind-altering substances stowed away under the loading area and arrested the driver, the driver on the spot. Facing charges of drug trafficking, the CEO of Cox Security has denied any involvement and claimed the driver was acting on his own accord. If the driver admits fault, he is looking up he is looking at up to one year in prison. Ooh. Okay. Milix wins ten year court case. Garion Gazette, report by Amy Thorson, dated eighteen thirty six zero one zero nine. Negotiations in the Hope scandal finally came to a close last Monday. Minix mi Mining, Milex Mining had made negative headlines almost 16 years ago when hundreds of employees filed a class action lawsuit against the mining giant. Many of them had suffered permanent lung damage ooh, after allegedly having been exposed to harm harmful gases over prolonged periods of time in the mining chamber dubbed Hope on Femus. A long, slow, expensive back and forth of appeals followed until last week when the Interplanetary Court finally ruled that the company would not be held accountable and did not have to compensate ooh, the alleged victims. Okay. Hmm. The conclusion is viewed by many as a great failure to the federal justice system. Neither the mining lobby system wide influence nor the federation's interest in Milek's economic success are a secret leading many to openly question the integrity of the court's decision okay so we got uh we got medicine for lung something so maybe excuse me mrs moore i have another question why did you frame those two news articles they're important to James and me. They reminds us they remind us of things we shouldn't forget. What things? I'm sorry, but that's really private. Could I ask you to leave now? I'm tired and need some rest. I see. Thank you. So we got one second. Medicine for lung disease treatment and it's highly addictive. I'm not sure if it's the woman that's using it or James. Um, because the woman doesn't look very good as well. Gary, Conrad, how did it go with Moore's wife? Well, she doesn't seem to know what her husband is up to. I took a look around the place, though. Good, we need all the information we can get. I'm almost at Cox's building. Meet you there. Alright. 
Oftentimes, in our investigations, the obvious solution would turn out to be the right one. People usually acted in accordance with their interests and their emotions. Whoever we first thought did it, they often turned out to have done it. With Moore and everyone else we had met so far, it always felt that we were at least one step removed from the truth. Nothing about this case was obvious. True, because if Moore is out of the country, if he is really on vacation, then who did it? Who had done it? Gary, Conrad, we need to go up there. Cox has probably been waiting for us for a while. What's with this shabby building? I thought this was a big company. This is just one of their bases of operations, apparently. Uh, listen, Conrad. I just got a call from the AG. She ordered us to arrest Cox. What? From the AG herself? Why? I thought we were just going to question him. Did you tell the AG that we don't suspect Cox of starting the broadcast? I did, but I guess there's been a change of plans. Why does she want us to arrest him? She said that we have strong reason to believe that he is part of the Liberators. Did she bother telling you what she is basing that on? No. No? We don't have time to waste here, Conrad. Let's go get him. Do you want to do the talking? I'll see if I can have a look around in the meantime. Sure. I don't think he's going to give us trouble, but keep on your toes. He's big in the security business after all. A doorbell. Very low tech. Shady, shady, shady people. Good evening, Mr. Cox. I'm Agent Long, and this is my partner, Agent Conrad. You look very stiff there, Mr. Cox. Good evening. I'm sorry, I don't have any more chairs in here. We'll stand. I heard there was a break in on Mr. Brown's watch. I didn't expect this sort of slip up from him. I apologize. We're not here for him. Actually, Mr. Cox, you are under arrest. Really? Really, Neil? The guy looks very tense. <laughs> That's a little way to talk to him. You are suspected of providing support for an interplanetary conspiracy. I see. I told you. I told you. Oh boy. Shit, Gary. Put that put down the gun or fire at Cox. Uh shoot. Um Fire at Cox? It's over, Mr. Cox. You just shot a CDI agent. It's, it's over, Mr. Cox. Oh please, don't under don't, don't overestimate your power. What about your wife or shooting an agent starts an alarm? Shooting an agent starts an alarm. <laughs> shooting a CDI agent a causes a city-wide city -wide alarm. They're already locking down the area. No, you... You're bluffing. I'm not. This is your last chance to surrender. Fuck you. You won't get anything from me. Put down your weapon and turn around to the wall. Police! Drop your weapons right now! It's under control, officers. Stand down. I'm Neil Conrad, CDI. No, <laughs> Gary. He's been, he's been, you know, those dramatic kind of melancholic monologues that he had. It was like foreshadowing. It was making me uncomfortable. In my first playthrough. Officer Black, we're coming up. If we see a gun, we'll shoot. Listen to me, I'm CDI. My partner was shot and needs medical attention. Mr. Cox opened fired on us. Opened fire. Open fire. Open fired. Open fire. We're coming in. No sudden movements. I will put away my gun if you keep yours pointed at Mr. Cox, okay? What's going on here? My partner and I came here to question Mr. Cox. He opened fire on us without warning. Show me your badge. See? I'm CDI. Hello. My name is Neil Conrad. This is my partner, Gary Long. He needs medical attention. Keep an eye on this guy, please. He is highly dangerous. I have to check on my partner. Okay, Marquez, make sure the building is clear and call for a medical team. I'll keep an eye on the perp. Gary, come on, say something. I... 
I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> In my first playthrough, I was really shocked that he got shot. I was so scared for him. You sure? I'm sure. Just hit my head when I fell. Oh, thank God. You're wearing your vest. Always when I'm in the field. Why? Neil, you're, we you're not wearing a vest. I see our friend is still alive. Going to be an interesting talk later. Fuck you. I'm not going to tell you anything. I was not ready for that. Fuck. Neither was I. We should have been more careful. Looks like the AG had a point when she asked us to arrest him. I told you the higher ups know what they're doing, but they're also hiding something from you. Don't forget that. Let's have a look around. There's probably something in here Cox really didn't want us to see. Alright. Um, I'm actually hungry <laughs> when <laughs> I actually got hungry when Neil kind of listed down the scent of the uh, the food earlier <laughs> in his monologue. So um Okay. Let me just check this. A pin board containing work schedules and security information. Okay. Give me a moment. I'm just gonna grab a bite. I'm hungry. Okay, so I got a few bites in. I'm um, sati sat sati satiated? Sat satiated satiated a little bit. So we're continuing with the investigation. Gary, come check this out. Looks like Cox was destroying records. I think we interrupted him. Don't touch anything. I'll get a team here to salvage whatever possible. Sounds good. What should I do next? Go home and take a few hours off. Let the adrenaline settle. Sounds good, but if you find out something about those drives or the next attack or Mr. Moore, I'll give you a call. But now, go home. I'll let the chief know what happened. How about you, Gary? You need to, you need the adrenaline to settle. That's traumatic. Getting shot. Copy that. To say the least, it's traumatic to say the least, for sure. Can only imagine. Oh, hey guys. Alright, am I recording? Okay, I'm recording. <laughs> Catherine, hey Neil, hey Cat, everything all right? No, Loris disappeared. What do you mean disappeared? I let her go to that stupid party, but she promised she would be home over an hour ago. Have you tried calling her? Of course, but she's not answering. She's probably having fun and forgot the time. But why won't she pick up? It's not like her. Maybe the music is too loud. I'm sure she'll come home once she realizes you tried to reach her. She won't want you to worry for too long. Alright. Hey, Neil. You want to swing by for a glass of wine? Mm-hmm. I'm on the train right now on my way back from work and I'm pretty tired. Is it okay if I swing by spontaneously? Oh yeah, of course. I'm sitting here waiting anyway. If I'm too tired to come and she's still not there in an hour, give me a call, okay? Okay. Of course we're gonna go. We're gonna go. <laughs> kind of acting like a, a matchmaker here. It's really cold in my room right now. I have the AC on, but it's because I'm just trying to buffer the noise outside. Even though it's not, I don't think it's working because we can still hear the the motorcycles and the dogs barking, right? I like the music. I 
love it. Okay, Catherine. Hey, want to go up to the roof? Uh, yeah, why not? Haven't been up there in a while. It was one of our re of the reasons why we rented the apartment, remember? Of course I do. Oh, how sweet. Oh. Getting excited about things is so easy when you're 24. Offer a cigarette or don't offer a cigarette? Uh, offer. You want a cigarette? I don't. Yeah, you know what? Fuck it. Still the same brand, huh? Yeah. I'm getting a little tired of it, but... But changing things about your life would mean too much work? Funny. Come on, it, was, it wasn't aimed at you. I'm that way too. Everyone is. So how's life going? Okay, I guess. Yours? Same. I know it's silly, but I sometimes still wonder why it didn't work out with us. There was a time when I was so sure we were a perfect match. I've asked myself the same a million times. And? I came up with lots of different answers. We were too young for a kid. I was too focused on my new job. Our place was too small. I wanted to find that one good reason to explain it to myself. To make sense of it. But honestly, I think we were just bad at it. We couldn't stop fighting about the same small bullshit. And we kept hurting each other for no reason until we reached a point of no return. That's it. Maybe you're right. But that's sad, don't you think? Yeah. Don't worry too much about Laura. I'm sure she's fine. We should be happy for her that she's having a good time at that party. You said yourself that she had some trouble fitting in with the other kids. Yeah, I know. It's just... I think about the shit I did when I was her age. That's probably why I worry so much about her. But she turned out okay. And I'm sure Laura will too. She's smart. I can barely keep my eyes open. I have to go now before I fall off this roof. If Laura isn't home in an hour, give me a call, okay? I will. Thanks for swinging by, swimming by, <laughs> for swinging by. It was nice to be up here with you again. I'll stay a little longer. Mm -hmm. What a throwback, huh? It was nice. See you soon. Oh, isn't that nice? They're still, uh, what do you call this? Amicable? They're still friends? That sort of thing. some new news new news one missed new news <clears throat> developments okay finally developments in Bani's murder Drovia today article by Zoe Kang dated 1840-0504 as previously reported Drovian foreign minister Joseph Bani was shot dead by an unknown assassin last night around 1.30 Attorney General Emilia Thorne announced this morning that the CDI has already arrested the suspected killer but did not elaborate on his identity or motives. Liam Campbell, chief of the CDI's Terror Prevention Unit, which was in large part responsible for Vanny's, Vanny's visit during his stay, is expected to make a statement of his own later today. Daniel Marav, Savient Prime Minister of Jovia's colonial government, called the murder on an extraordinary failure of the Garian estate, the Garian state, adding it was a scandal that Drovian politicians have to fear for their lives on Garian soil. Drovia today has already spoken to two key witnesses, Mr. Banny's personal bodyguards, Carl Smith and Lisa Morton. They were both present at the villa at the time of his murder. Both are reported to have been treated respectfully by the CDI and that the Guardian authorities showed genuine concern and professionalism in the matter. Well, of course. Of course, of course. See, if I was rude to them, it was, if I was very firm with them. Oh, it's open? Where, do, where does this take me? Oh, it's just the same place. Okay. Okay. 
Ooh, what are you? Interesting. Okay. Now, now this is broken. Before it was the stairs. Okay. So I wonder if I was rude to those um, bodyguards, what would have been the article? How was how how would the article be written? gaze in the glass. There were so many things on my mind. Laura's disappearance worried me more than I had shown. I thought maybe it had been the wrong call to let her go to that party. In hindsight, it probably wouldn't have mattered. And then there was Cox. I was curious about his explanation as to why he had opened fire on us. But mostly, I was glad that I hadn't had to shoot him. All right. Welcome, Mr. Conrad. Your visitor is waiting inside. Visitor? I'm not expecting anyone. Who is it? Your visitor is ID unknown. What the? I didn't tell you that I was expecting someone. Why did you let them in? I'm sorry, I did not understand the question. Stupid freaking thing. I'll see for myself. Draw your gun, my dear. Okay, good. Okay, Horace. You can put that gun away. Who are you? You got a nice place up here. They pay you well. Sure they do. I can <laughs> I can cough out five hundred bucks without, you know, blinking an eye for so for a stranger, so <laughs> show me your face, turn around. Okay. Lila? Who? Oh right, my face. I don't like it, to be honest. Wait, it's you. You're the one who assaulted Lila. I'm Zora. Nice to meet you. Slowly put your hands up. Hands up, put your hands I'm here to talk. Put your hands up or I'll, or I'll be forced to shoot. Nobody's forcing you to do anything. You can make your own decisions. Put your hands up now or what do you want? What do you want? We need a guy in the CDI to help us out with a few things. And why the hell would I do that? We have your daughter. I should have led with that. You what? We took your daughter. Laura? No, you're full of shit. You can ask your ex. She's not at home. What did you do to her or where is she? Uh, what did you do to her? What did you do to her? Um, she's not going to tell me where she is, so what did you, what did you do to her? Nothing. She's fine. You work for the Liberators, right? I have a record of your conversation with the man, with the man who shot Fanny. Is stealing little girls really how, really, little, really how they're trying to stand up for their ideals? You'd have to, you'd have to ask them. I don't know or care what they believe in. We're just getting paid. Or rather, we were supposed to, but then you showed up and, batched, and botched the final step of the plan. Liberators pay you to get the data, or who is we? Liberators ask you to steal the chief's data and deliver it to them? So you pieced that together already? Yes. What was on that stick that made it so important? No idea. Wait, you don't know either? I thought you had the drive. I don't, and I don't think I'll get my hands on it anytime soon. Who has it then if you don't? My superiors, if it still exists at all. That complicates things. I guess we'll have to move on to plan B right away. Since the handover went south, the liberators refused to pay us. We need that data to get our money after all. This is where you come in. If you figure out what the the data is about we might be able to locate it in the cdi database and extract it i'll send a private sheet to your cell submit it to us once you find out i will do no such thing don't be difficult hand me your cell for a minute will you why you don't need to open a sheet that's for something else i need to access the cdi network for a moment what for 
to set up a back door for our hack. Why are you telling me all this? I could arrest you right here, right here and, but you won't. And I doubt that you could. I'm telling you this because we work together now. The better you do your part, the sooner our client pays us and the sooner you see your daughter again. If you do anything on my cell, they will, they will trace it back to me. Don't worry, I will use someone else's credentials. Whose credentials? It doesn't matter. Give me your cell. At least tell me who I'd be throwing under the bus. Gary Long. What? No. His job means everything to him. Yes, he just did a monologue earlier. So, Is that really more important to you than Laura's safety? Come on, she's your own only bargaining chip. I'll try to find out what the data was about. That's got to count for something. You're definitely not increasing her chances if you don't cooperate now. I can't do it or use my login or... Uh, oof. I can't do it. I don't think you understand the severity of the situation. If you harm her, I won't do anything for you. Neil, many people in the CDI have kids. You're a monster. This is not my call. Just give me your cell. I really don't want to frame Gary. Use my login. Use my login. You wouldn't want to get yourself in trouble like this. No, you wouldn't want me to get in trouble like this. I'm too important for you. So we agree, it has to be your colleague's credentials. They're really pushing it. No, use mine. Use my credentials or I'm not giving it to you. Fine, but my boss won't be happy about it. This wasn't the plan. Done. So that's it then. I gave you access and I'll tell you all I find out about the data. You'll let Laura go now, right? This was just the first step. If you keep cooperating, you'll see her again soon. Well, I didn't really cooperate. <laughs> Please, just let her go. She doesn't have to suffer like this. I'll help you anyway, so leave us alone. No can do. Sorry, it's not my call. Is this really what you do with your life? Murder and child abduction? I don't have time for this. We're done here. Answer my question, how do you live with yourself? You work for the CDI, don't you kill and abduct people all the time? Spare me your moral, relativism crap, I'm not, some merc I'm not a mercenary. Sure you are. The CDI is trying to do the right thing, you do whatever the highest bidder tells you to. Oh, she, she's a, yes, she's a mercenary, yeah. I did choose the other one in the first playthrough. But for Elora, I, I chose the same choices that I chose before because I really felt bad for Gary <laughs> hey hey I also feel bad for my daughter of course I'm very worried for the daughter for sure but I was thinking that I can find something else I can like um, I can figure something out to save her without you know throwing my friend out under the bus anyway Zora the right thing what kind of childish nonsense do you believe in you don't have to believe in anything to not be evil. I don't believe in anything in particular. And yet here you are talking about good and evil. Because we know what that is. We have an intuition for it. Bullshit. There's no such thing. We invented it. No, no. Look, this lizard over here. Oh, he's a lizard. He's my friend. He has never done anything evil. He can't. All, anim all animals just do shit for a while and then they die. Look, are you trying to keep me talking? You can't pretend to not care about anything. In fact, I know you do. You were separated from someone you care about. What are you talking about? The sniper we caught. You care about him, don't you? You wanted to start a new life with him or you two are lovers? Uh, you wanted to start a new life with him. That's none of your business. But it's funny you mentioned him. Thanks to you and your colleagues, I won't see him ever again. Didn't you just tell me it was bad to put people away against their will? My daughter harmed nobody. Your friend killed someone and might start a war. 
let her go or offer to deliver a message offer to deliver a message maybe we can get the other guy to talk maybe we can make a trade Neil said what trade don't try to fuck with me I know he's never getting out of there probably not but I could deliver a message what do you want in return promise me to keep Laura safe promise that I'll get her back when this is over that depends on your actions, but I can promise that we'll actually let her go if you work with us. Alright, what's your message? Tell him Tell him the moon rises in the south. Okay. Um huh. Okay. I'll be back with more instructions. Oh whoa. As soon as the woman disappeared into the night. My facade slipped, and I nearly collapsed on the balcony floor. I took out my cell with shaking hands and tapped on Laura's face in my contacts. Maybe. Maybe. She didn't pick up. I resisted the urge to call Catherine next. I couldn't just tell her about what had happened. She knocked on my door in the early morning, but I didn't open. I tried to decide on a course of action, but I couldn't concentrate. My mind alternated between trying to remember my last conversation with Laura and conjuring up horrible images of her tied to a chair in some basement. Sometime later, my alarm rang. I got up to go to work, not sure if I was ready to talk to Kat. I must have stood outside her apartment for a few minutes when I finally made a decision. Okay, so we don't really have anything new, anything, any new information, so we just need to talk to Kat. I'm sorry, Kat. Neil, where the fuck have you been? I've tried to call you a million times. I even came to your apartment. I'm so sorry. I... Laura still isn't home. I've called all her friends and nobody knows anything. Looks like she never went to that party. Shit, Neil. What do I do now? Listen, Kat. I know what happened to her or you should call the police. I know what happened to her. We can't call the police right now. Kat, I... I know what happened to her. What? She... She was abducted. They took her to blackmail me. I'm so sorry. What are you saying? Who took her? I'm not sure yet. Seems like they've... They're a group of mercenaries involved in Banny's murder. No. They promise they won't harm her if I do what they say. How can you do that to us? I didn't. It's not like I allowed them to take her. You have to tell the CDI. Maybe they can find out where she is and get her out of there. It's too risky right now. I'm afraid of what they'll do if I... If they find out I snitched. And you think that people who abduct children and murder foreign ministers give a shit about their promises? I'm still evaluating the situation. I'll do everything in my power to keep her safe. What do they want from you? They want me to leak information about the case I'm investigating. About the liberators. Please, Kat. Trust me with this, okay? I won't let them do anything to her. I have to go. I'll call you as soon as I hear anything. And you do the same, okay? Alright. I'll be here all day. Okay. So... Why does this screen look the same as the... Uh, as the art? Was it an art? One second. Uh, clues. Yeah, the pin board looks familiar. What else did I miss there? <laughs> I missed something in the Palloon Market. I missed two things. Okay. I was too hungry. <laughs> I missed things.
who is this? Dad, Laura, where are you? Why didn't you let them use the log in they wanted? I... Please, Dad, they're going to hurt me if you don't listen to them. You need to get me out of here. They swear they'll let me go if you do what they ask. I know how important your job is to you. Laura, but how bad can the things be that they're asking you? Please, I... I do... I don't... I want to finish my novel. Laura, listen to me. I'll get you out of there or I'll do what they say. Okay, fine. I'll do what they say. Tell them I'll do what they say. Do you hear me? I'll do what you say. Just give me some time and I'll get you what you want. Leave my daughter out of this. I need to go. Oh boy. Are you okay, buddy? buddy? I know you're not okay, but... Okay. Okay. He just needed to gather himself a bit. Okay. And we have some news to take care of here. How long have you been doing this? I don't know if I should... <laughs> Am I reaching a point where I should uh, end the episode? I haven't. Gary. Morning, Conrad. You look pale. Are you sick? No, I'm fine. I hope you got some rest after yesterday's incident. Let me bring you up to speed. The chief said he's making some announcement this morning. Didn't sound good at all. But we'll see in a few minutes. We took Cox in for questioning. You can interrogate him later. But first, you should talk to Saito. He's in her office and some news on Intel. Some new Intel on Moore and Cox for you. Okay, I'm on it. Listen, Conrad, I might have been a little intense these past few days. These are special circumstances. You understand that, right? Sure, it's been hard on all of us. I gotta run. Talk to you later. Now this is just making the situations, the, the, the decisions that I need to make harder for me right now. <laughs> these interactions that we're having. Saito. Ah, good morning, Neil. Hey, Saito. Gary told me you had some new intel for me. Indeed. I put everything on our pinboard over there. Let me give you a quick overview. First, I assembled some basic information on James Moore and his wife. Second, I managed to pull their recent bank statements. Maybe we'll find something useful in there. That's all I could get my hands on for now, but I got more coming tomorrow. And third, I took a look at the CV of the guy who fired at you, Albert Cox. And guess what I found? He's a Saviant and he grew up on Drovia. Oh, that's a surprise. I suspect that he was working with the Liberators. Well, who knows? He still might. What's also interesting is that he changed his name 20 years ago. Shoot, we're running out of late to that meeting with the Chief. Let's go, I'll tell you the rest on the way. Cox was born as Albert Bolton. His parents owned a big company at the time, Bolton Security Services. They were responsible for the safety of the Sabian colony on Drovia. Hmm, okay. You mean Sector 2? The one that blew up 40 years ago? Exactly. Bolton Security was sued into oblivion over the incident and eventually went bankrupt. When Cox had finished school, he changed his name and moved to Gara. That's when he founded his own security company using some grant money. Thank you, Saito. Great work as always. Oh, it's nothing. I just did some advanced browsing. Uh, before you go in, I need to ask. Is everything alright? You look... not great. Just didn't get enough sleep lately. Thanks for asking. Ooh, they can, <laughs> they can smoke in their office. I think everybody's here. Let's start. Thank you all for coming. As many of you know, I've been working for the CDI for 28 years now. I have done everything in my power to defend the values our planet stands for. The principles of freedom, tolerance, equal rights for everyone, and justice have been guiding all of my actions. I have always been proud of our work and our commitment to the Garyan democracy. Sadly, the path to justice isn't always clear. And we have to make difficult decisions. Oh no. The murder of Joseph Banny 
has severely harmed the, the relationship between our planet and Jovia. And it puts the, the fragile peace in our solar system at risk. The Domestic Terrorism Division was charged with protecting Bani under my leadership. In light of our failure to do so, the Attorney General and I have agreed that the only appropriate response is for me to resign from my duties at the CDI effective immediately. Oh no, Chief. I hope that the separatist groups on Jovia will consider this as a sign of remorse and of our intention to make up for the damage that has been done. I enjoyed working with all of you and I wish you nothing but the best. I hope that each of you will find your way of fighting for justice. I will still be in my office today if there are any open questions or issues you want to talk to me about. My successor will be announced by the Attorney General in the near future. Starting tomorrow, Agent Long will be taking over my responsibilities until a permanent replace replacement is found. Thank you and goodbye. No, Chief. What do we do? Objectives. Okay, we have new news. Banny's Murderers Speak. Gary and Gazette. Report by Amy Mandel. 1840-0505. Less than 24 hours after Banny's death, an organization calling itself the Liberators has claimed responsibility for the attack. It was a scene right out of the movie, with screens all over the capital playing their radical message. If you weren't there, this is what they said. Hello, fellow citizens. We are the Liberators, defenders of progress, freedom, and reason. These values have been integral to our society for centuries, but lately, they have increasingly come under threat. Religious radicals calling themselves the Soviet Front are aiming to establish a theocratic government on Jovia. The Soviet faith is based on superstition and rejects science to the point where it endangers the lives of everyone under its thumbs. Thumb. We all saw four, de four decades ago today what happens when the Soviet state is left to its own devices. We can't let history repeat itself. We demand President Robertson to end his madness now. President Robertson end this madness now, to put a stop to all independent stocks and reinstate full Garian rule. We remove the radical Sabian Joseph Bani to get it started. If you do not start implementing measures to meet our demands, more Sabian lives will be spent to protect the future of us all. The Savian population on Gyara will be taken hostage until the Garian population on Jovia is guaranteed its freedom. We must step up for them if our government won't. Await our next move within 48 hours. It won't be as silent as the first. So far, authorities have not confirmed that the people sending the message were in fact involved in Foreign Minister Bani's death or what the chilling announcement at the end might pertain to. Okay. Disclaimer, the Garian Gazette does not support this message and will continue to stand for togetherness and inclusivity in these difficult times. Oh, really? Okay. New apartment. <laughs> you got an email, new apartments. Dear Mr. Conrad, we have found 244 new offers fitting your research criteria. In only a few clicks, you can make your dream home a reality. Take a look today. Current search criteria, planet, Gera, region, center, districts 1 to 4, layer, higher or highest, interior, luxurious, how, m whoa, two rooms or more, max price 2 million GHD, how much, how much does Neil make for a detective, really? Do they really make that amount of money? Well, it depends maybe on his rank, yeah, where do we go? Where do we go? Talk to the chief. Where is the chief? How do we go up? Can't go up. Okay. I think the chief is over here. Yeah, here he is. Chief. Hello, Conrad. How can I help you? I wanted to say goodbye. It was good working for you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I have to admit I'm surprised by your decision. It's not like you could have done much more to protect Bani. Come on, Conrad. We both know that doesn't matter. Heads needed to roll for this. Chief, 
Why did we arrest Cox or the AG fired you for something else? Uh, shoot. Okay. The AG fired you over something else, didn't she? I overheard your conversation yesterday. Why are you telling me this? It didn't sound like you were arguing about Banny's death. You are aware that you can be suspended for eavesdropping on your superiors? In fact, it seemed like you were suspecting the AG of something. Is that the real reason why she wanted to get rid of you? This one is out of your league. Just respect the chain of command. I see. Chief. Why did we arrest- Okay, that's good. I can still ask about it. <laughs> okay, why did we arrest Cox? I mean, it looks like it was the right call. But we didn't know at the time. And why didn't you give us the arrest order yourself? The AG didn't tell me why she wanted to do it, so I refused to give the order. Ooh. So you don't know either? No. It seems like it's classified. Same as the information on, this, on that stick. I see. I'll have to pack up my things now. I wish you all the best for your career at the CDI. Thank you. Your cell contacts haven't changed lately, have they? Haven't changed in years. Good. Are you going to contact me? <laughs> in secret? Do that then. I know. Yeah. Okay, it's hard to trust your superiors like this. So where's Gary? Gary! <laughs> I'm just thinking, whenever I say Gary, I'm just thinking of <laughs> Gary from Spongebob. <laughs> that was unexpected. Gary, fuck, I can't believe I'm standing in for the chief. I never thought they would pick me. I have to call my wife. Guess I'll be doing some overtime in the next few days. Don't you think it's strange that the AG fired him? Got to admit she never really liked him. Maybe she was waiting for an opportunity. But someone had to get fired for Banny's death just for the optics, don't you think? Maybe, but the chief always did an excellent job. It didn't have to be him. I'm not thrilled about it either, but we should focus on the Liberator's trip. I don't want to start my new job with a string of terror attacks. Well, I think the AG also knows something about it, so maybe, you know, she needs to tell us what she knows. Let's recap what we got so far. Listen up, squad. Time for a little wrap up. Um, actually, Gary, I missed two clues in the. <laughs> I suppose you're all as surprised as I am about our chief's sudden retirement. However, we need to focus on the Liberators and their plans now. Let's go over everything we've got so far once more. Jovia's foreign minister, Bani, was shot last night by a sniper who goes by the name of Boyd. Boyd then went to see a woman called Zora, which seems to have been a deviation from their original plan. He convinced her to hand him a stick with con confidential stolen data. The next morning, Boyd met another man to hand him that data. Abraham Gonzalez, CEO of the Drovian company PowerUp. We were able to extract a deleted message from Gonzalez's cell which, which proves that someone paid him. To fetch the stick and send the data to an unknown address once he was outside the Garian network. This leads us to believe that the data cannot be sent unnoticed via the web, which implies only the best kept secrets of the Garian government. Which applies which applies only to the best kept secrets of the Garian government. We don't know who paid either of them. But the message to Gonzalez was sent via an encrypted channel on the Mercurius network. <clears throat> That means that it must be one of the higher-ups of a large, publicly traded company. We don't know what was on the data stick because we haven't been cleared for access yet. Yesterday morning, an anti-Savian terror group calling themselves the Liberators publicly broadcast a video in which they claimed responsibility for Bani's murder. They also announced a second attack within 48 hours. The broadcast was sent from the, from the ad spot building. They operate all the billboard across the city. At the time the, the video started, the building was being guarded by a Cox security employee. We have reason to believe that the perpetrator was another employee of that same company, James Moore. His wife says that he went on a holiday at Manami Tree Resort, but he never turned up there. Ooh. We are currently running a planet-wide search for him, but without success so far. The CEO of Cox Security 
Albert Cox opened fire on Agent Conrad and myself when we went to arrest him. Why were you arresting Cox? asked Young. It was an order from the Attorney General. Conrad convinced Cox to surrender. We arrested him and brought him in for questioning. He had been in the process of destroying hard drives before we arrived. Our IT department is currently trying to restore what's left of the data. Do we think that Cox is a key figure behind the Liberators? He certainly is involved with them in some way, but he doesn't have access to the Mercurius network. We have to assume that there is some bigger fish behind Cox. What's also strange is that he is a Saviant himself. He grew up on Drovia. Our current priority is to prevent any further attacks. Colroy, I want you to support the ongoing manhunt for James Moore. Young, we brought some stuff back from Cox's office. Work your magic on it. Let us know if you find something. Saito, you keep gathering as much information as you can on our prime suspects. Conrad, you should check whether you can establish a motive why Moore would support the Liberators. Okay. Take a look at all the evidence you've got, including the information Saito put on our pin board. You should also have a chat with Cox. We brought him to the interrogation room in the basement. Roger that. We also brought our sniper in for a second round of questioning. You could give it another try and see if you can get something out of him. Gonzalez surrounded himself with the lawyers. Could be a while until we can interrogate him again. That's all for now. Come back to me when you got something. Alright, so I think this is a good time to stop. Um, I think we have been going a while. So, yeah. Once again, guys, thank you for hanging out on this episode of Lacuna. If you want more, then um, stay tuned. I am going to be finishing this story very very soon so yeah and i'll be uploading all of the vi the episodes by then so take care out there guys and have a good rest of your day rest of your night and i'll catch you on the next video bye